Jesus for blessing me. Hallelujah. Hello, Canaan family. We greet you in the name of Jesus here at Canaan Baptist Church of Christ. We want to say thank you for tuning in. For those of you who have been here for the first time, we want to say welcome. We give you a warm Canaan welcome. We just thank you for being here. We know it's not an accident that you're here and that God has a word for you today. We also want to just say for those of you who have not um, press the subscribe button. We would want to encourage you to do that so that you can be able to have all of the notifications of all of our services. We have come to praise the Lord. Yes, we have. And we are here because the Lord has been so good to us. And we want to just continue to worship him. And we say wherever you are, we want to encourage you to lift up your hands and to give him the highest praise as we come and say together, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is his name in all the earth who has set his glory above the heavens. Let us just bow in prayer. Father God, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, yes. we thank you for your grace, for your mercy that has sustained us, that has kept us. We thank you, God, for your peace that has passed, passes all understanding. Yes. Lord, we thank you for being God. Lord, we lift up those who are grieving, those who are hurting, those who are suffering, those who are depressed, those who are seeking you, God. Lord, wrap your loving arms around them, God, and give them comfort and peace. Lord, we don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we put our trust, all of our trust and hope in you. Because when we walk with you, Lord, we know we can get through anything, Jesus. So we just ask that you would continue to protect us and guide us, guide this church, Lord. And through it all, we will give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We ask these things in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. amen. We will now ha continue to worship as we have the reading of our word by Deaconess Betty Johnson. Today's scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, and verses 23 through 25. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. The, Lord, the word of the Lord for the people of God. Next, we will have a musical selection by the Voices of Promise.
how wonderful it is to acknowledge that every praise that we render, every praise we lift up, goes to our God. He is worthy of the praise, the honor, the glory, all that we will render because he is great and greatly to be praised. I'm excited on this worship day. I'm thankful for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord, to be here standing along with this worship crew who are presenting to you this day on Communion Sunday, our blessings, our adoration, our exaltation unto the Lord. We're thankful for the invocation that has stirred us for the word of God, uh, that has guided us for the music that is inspiring us, that uh, our music ministry is alive and well here at Canaan Baptist Church of Christ. And we're thankful also that we are able to present uh, multiple ways of worshiping the Lord here at the house of Canaan. Uh, we are now worshiping under the tent here at Canaan on site, not in a sanctuary. Uh, we have not uh, decided to do that at this point, but we're pleased that that is an option uh, for those who want to worship. But certainly as we have been coming to you for lo these number of Sundays, by way of our YouTube channel, we are thankful for this privilege and opportunity. And certainly that you are worshiping along with us in your various ways, there sheltered at home in your various residences. We will bless the Lord at all times and certainly on the day that he has made. And as we come, we're mindful that uh, God expects, he invites, he encourages our generosity and I'm speaking to a generous church called Canaan. We're thankful for the various ways in which you have given and continue to give by way of the cash app, by way of the U.S. Postal Service as you send in your tithes, your offerings, and your gifts, as well as by your spirit of wanting to be continually connected with your church. And some of you come by to drop off your offerings. All of it is blessed. It is good in the sight of the Lord who encourages us to give in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Uh, shall men give unto your bosom. We're prepared to continue with this worship. I'm looking for the Spirit of the Lord to take me higher and higher as after this next election, we'll look to the message that God has prepared. And we pray that you're ready to share in the communion service on this communion Sunday. God be with you. The choir will come again. It is good to see the Reverend Marcus Blackwell sing you here with us. Uh, and certainly this trio that has been blessing our hearts and spirits today.
how melodious the worship music of the piano and the word of God does instruct uh, does encourage everything that have breath to praise the Lord we are thankful for the worship opportunity and certainly for our worship as we study as we lift up as we present and proclaim the word of God let us bow to say in your your presence father to declare you in this place to acknowledge that you are the awesome magnificent and wonderful God to declare that there is none like you beside you there is none that can stand with you uh, because you are marvelous in all of your ways we thank you for gathering us today even as we're gathered in the sanctuary or in our homes or in wherever we may be connected with you in worship we know that you are an omniscient ubiquitous God you are omnipresent and so wherever my voice may carry and so much farther than my voice you are there uh, if we were to ascend up in heaven you are there if we were to make our bed in Hades you are, are there if we were to take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the sea even there will you be God and God all by yourself we pray now that you will send a visitation of the Holy Spirit uh, that the Spirit would inhabit the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart and declare what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God speak now Lord and we will all hear use me as your vessel your consecrated vessel that I may go forth with the word for your listening people my prayer my supplication and thanksgiving is in the name of Jesus and for his sake we say amen and amen again my brothers and sisters beloved we would ask that you turn with us to the Old Testament, uh, to the Old Testament book of Isaiah, as we will look to begin at the beginning of that book, Isaiah chapter 1, where there is a word for us for this occasion uh, in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, the prophetic book of Isaiah, in chapter 1. Uh, looking at verses 17 through 20 17 through 20 we find recorded these words learn to do well seek judgment relieve the oppressed judge the fatherless plead for the widow come now and let us reason together said the Lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool if ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land but if ye refuse and rebel and rebel we ye shall be devoured from, with the sword for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it and maybe you've heard this in another version of the Bible where it says learn to do right seek justice Defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter. Let us be reasonable, says the Lord of hosts, who speaks from his divine perch. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat good things in the land. You will prosper. You will walk in divine favor you will be kept in my keeping but if you resist and rebel you shall suffer it is clear to me it is clear to me that God the creator maker keeper sustainer redeemer of the universe that God has just made an offer he has just made a reasonable offer that is worth considering it is worth contemplating and heeding so this leads me to a thought about a subject for this message and that thought is this an offer you can't refuse an offer you can't refuse 
it's probably helpful to review Isaiah chapter 1 as what we might call a summons to court. A court where he will judge whether his people have been doing what is right in his sight as it relates to their walk before the Lord as it relates to their work in his kingdom and their dealings with one another. God has summoned his people Israel back there in the days of Isaiah. He has summoned them for this hearing. But as students of the word and as his modern day Israel, we've been invited in to witness the proceedings. Because, you see, the judgment rendered will not only apply to them, it will also apply to us. God has made the case about his people that some have been less than model citizens of the kingdom. They have been rebellious, stubborn, and corrupt. And it reminds us that the more things change, the more they remain the same. Uh, these people are guilty of not only not having sound judgment, uh, but all manners of transgression. Or else, why would they turn their backs on the God who has blessed and nurtured them? As God puts it, the ox knows its master. The donkey knows its owner's feeding trough. But Israel doesn't know me. They don't feel me. They can't quite understand me. My own people called by my name. And what makes it worse is the condition they're in. God points out the fact that they are a devastated people. Your country is desolate, he says. Your, your cities are burning. Your fields are being stripped by strangers. And you're like a beat down hut in the middle of a vineyard. God is telling it like a T.I.S. test. He is being plain and direct. God is being forthright with his people. And that's why God declares that he's fed up. He's fed up, but he wants to make an offer. Even in a situation like this, even with the people who have these issues and have transgressed in this way and, and a people who are caught up uh, in this dysfunction and dealing with, with uh, these wayward issues. God says, I want to make you an offer. And it is an offer to a people behaving, as he puts it, worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. In his offer, in his offer, he considers several transgressions that must first be acknowledged. Let us put all, uh, all the issues on the table. He's first, he first poses a question to the defendants about all the vain offerings they tend to bring him. Offerings with no true meaning or devotion. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you? This trampling of my courts. Oh, this, this, isn't, this isn't a word to the same people that God had David give a word to uh, because David uh, taught them way back how to worship God in the right way. Remember what he said in Psalm 100, we will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and, and come into his courts, into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. This is a people uh, who has lost the art, uh, the meaning, the significance of, of true worship. And then God cites their trespasses against the court. Your incense is detestable to me. Your new moons, Sabbaths, and convocations, I cannot bear. Uh, they are worthless assemblies. Your, your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals, I hate with all of my being. This is a word from the Lord. Uh, they have become a burden to me. I'm weary. I'm, can you just see God just being too through, too through? Um, I am weary of bearing them. A and then he even says this. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you even when you offer many prayers. I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. This sounds like a God who is ready to walk away 
uh, from a people that he has loved, that he has saved, that he has redeemed, that he has kept, that he has blessed for so many years, but a people uh, who are now one that he doesn't even understand. But I'm so glad of something uh, that all of us uh, should be pleased with. I, I'm so glad that our God uh, is the same yesterday, today, and always. Uh, I'm so glad that no matter how dark, dismal, or depressed the situation might become, I'm so glad no matter how far we've fallen, uh, how uh, far astray we have gone, our God is the kind of God who offers a way out of no way, uh, a way of redemption. Uh, because, you see, there is no God like our God who will make you an offer, an offer of restoration and renewal that you simply can't refuse. So we should ask of Isaiah in this passage, in this first chapter of his prophetic book, Tell us what's in the offer from the Lord. Well, uh, from all that I have read and studied, uh, I see first it is an offer of redemption. Uh, the Lord says, wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight and stop. Stop doing wrong. In other words, repentance is the first order of business. And I recall somewhere uh, that speaks, somewhere else that speaks to this same thought. Somewhere in 1 John 1, where it tells us if we confess our sins, confession uh, being the repentance of believers, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Not only that, not only that, but from everything that I know, uh, there is only one true disinfectant uh, for a sin-sick world, for the stain of sin. And, and that disinfectant is nothing but the blood of Jesus. And, and from what I understand, there, there is also an offer to, to, to serve. There, there is first the offer, uh, if you would, uh, an offer of redemption. But I see that there's also an offer to serve, but to serve God <clears throat> and his purposes in spirit and in truth. He spells this out. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Uh, attend to those who are in need, who are sick, homeless, and helpless. In other words, do the ministry, do the ministry of worship and devotion, of helps, hope and service and the ministry of consolation. And, and, and you know, uh, you'll find that you're on the right track when you understand what Paul understood about this thought, this notion, this concept of ministry. Remember when he told us this, uh, we hold the treasure of our ministry. Uh, we hold uh, this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Uh, I, I pray that we never try and steal his glory. Never try and, and declare that we are the way, that, that we are uh, of, of the ones and that we are the gatekeepers uh, to the kingdom. I hope that we never get in the way of God's way. I hope that we are always just a vessel and an instrument. I hope that we always realize uh, that we're not the one. Uh, we are ambassadors serving the one, his purpose, called to do what he would have us do. Because the excellency of the power must always be with God and not of us. But not only do I, I see an offer of redemption and I see an offer uh, to serve, to, to minister, but certainly there's an offer uh, to take on the mind of God, take on uh, the mindfulness, the ways uh, of God. Uh, this portion of the offer is what you might call a plea deal uh, that we should not refuse. Uh, remember what he says, that, that verse that we have heard throughout the ages. Come now, let us reason together. 
though things might be terrible and tore up in your life, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall, I'll transform them. I will cleanse and disinfect them. They shall be as wool. It's the proposition and the offer, the proposal is something like this, the situation that God had as he pleaded with Job. You know, when Job had, had gotten beside himself, yes, he had been patient. Yes, he had suffered much. Yes, he had to deal with the fickle favor uh, of so-called friends. And, and, and he had suffered loss in his family. Yes. But, but Job got caught up in the drama of his own life. So much so that he couldn't see the awesome truth and the powerful presence and the magnificent hand of God in all of his circumstances. And so he started thinking that he had all the answers himself. Uh, even uh, someone that we honor like Job uh, sometimes can get caught up uh, in the delusion of their own self-importance. But, but uh, God took time to reason with, with Job. God spoke to Job in the middle of the whirlwind and said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man because I'm ready to speak to you, Job, uh, God to man. Uh, I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the world? A and tell me if you understand who marked off the dim dimensions of the universe. Who, who, who was it, Job, that made the creation, who breathed life uh, into man uh, and, and, and formed and fashioned everything that you see? Uh, as, as God spoke to Job, he also wants to speak to us. As he made Job an offer, as, as Isaiah uh, was able in his, in his name and through his words make Israel an offer, God wants to make us an offer, an offer of salvation and redemption. And, and I do believe that with any offer that the Lord makes, we should not and cannot refuse. Just as he did with Job and, and as he does in so many other situations, uh, as he has done throughout the annals of time. God says, come, let us reason together. Let us have a talk, uh, God to man. Um, he will, he will, he will reason with us if we can just answer a few questions. Uh, the kind of questions that he posed to Job and the kind of questions that he'll pose to anyone uh, who would get to a point of thinking that uh, they know it all, they've seen it all and done it all. Uh, God wants to ask the question. He'll ask, who was it by whom all things were made and without whom was not anything made that was made? Uh, who was it that knew the end from the beginning and knew your faults and your failings even before you were a gleam in your mother's eyes and, and yet formed and fashioned you and declared that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Who was it that convicted your spirit and your soul, just as he did the psalmist, uh, to declare uh, of the Lord, where can I go from your spirit and where can I flee from your presence? Who was it that helped us to realize that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and yet sin he sends his spirit to help our infirmities? Because, you see, sometimes we don't know what we should even pray for. But it is the Spirit of God who makes intercession for us. Who was it that taught David that psalm of meditation, repentance, and restoration? You remember Psalm 51, uh, where he says in part, Create in me a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from, my, from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You remember the psalm where it says, Restore unto me the joy 
of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Job who went on to say, Lord, if you do these things, uh, since you're making this offer, since you're prepared to bless me exceedingly abundantly until my cup runneth over, since I know that you'll never leave me nor forsake me, since I know that you are forgiving and forbearing God, since I know that you're caring and loving God, because I know that you are God of grace, mercy, and kindness. If you do all of these things, then will I teach transgressors your ways. And sinners will be converted unto thee. Come, he says. The Lord is saying to all of us, at any time, when we somehow lose our way, when we get off track, uh, when somehow we start believing our own press, when we get caught up in our own drama, uh, when we get confused by the meanderings of our own mind, God will say to us, come, let us reason together. And as God reasons with us, as he convicts us and speak to us and shows us things that we never knew and understood and tells us everything about ourselves. I'm sure that you'll say in the spirit of David, give me a clean heart and I give me a clean heart. Reason with me. Speak to me, Lord. Visit with me. Holy Spirit, inhabit my praises, my prayer, uh, my teaching, preaching, uh, my very utterances. Come, Lord, and have your own way. Give me a clean heart. And I, and I will follow thee. And offer from the Lord a proposition. A word from the Lord to his people. A word from a kind, caring God. Uh, a word uh, from the God uh, who will bless us at all times, who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his glory. A word that comes also by way of his son, uh, that comes by way of the son who was the sacrificial lamb uh, for our salvation and redemption. The one who Paul spoke of in 1 Corinthians, uh, when he reminded us, he reminded us that on the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he set up a supper with his disciples. That he would reason with them, not so much through words, but through communion and fellowship. And spoke to them about the significance of the bread and wine. And as uh, he broke the bread in their presence, he declared, this represents my body. This is my body, which is broken for thee. This do ye. And then he took the cup and, and said, this also uh, has significance. This cup represents the New Testament in my blood. And as oft as you drink, drink in remembrance of me. Uh, and as we prepare to share in the table of the Lord, we want to bow in prayer as Jesus did himself uh, to beseech a blessing, a consecration upon this communion. Our Father, we bless and honor, we bless and honor you for being the great compassionate and forgiving God that you are for being the loving and considerate God that you are for being the God who knows of our down sitting and up our uprising who knows of our trespasses and our transgressions and yet who loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life and so in the name of that son and on behalf of his gifts and his sacrifice, we pray for a blessing upon these gifts, this bread which represents his broken body, that in the sacrifice of his brokenness, we will find our wholeness and completeness. We will find our forgiveness and restoration and then Lord uh, with this cup that represents his shed blood which is the ultimate disinfectant for sin 
We pray that you will consecrate it. That as we drink, uh, we will walk in the newness of a new testament, a new covenant, a new relationship, a new redemption. All things will be done away with, and behold, all things will be new. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus, his sacrifice. Thank you for this love. Thank you that Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. In his name and for his sake we say amen. And amen again. As we are now at the point where the people who are called by the name of God, who have accepted the sacrifices of his body and his shed blood, would come together in communion, wherever we may be, to eat and drink. In the name of the Lord, we declare and we say amen. And thank you, Lord. And with that, as we prepare to go down from this place, and as we pray that someone who has heard a word from the Lord present a case for the redemption that God offers, that you too have listened with spiritual ears and you are prepared to embrace, to receive the Lamb that paid for it all, the redeeming Lamb, the sacrificial Lamb, the loving Lamb, the Lamb that arose with all power, and that is our Christ that you would receive him and receive his salvation and realize that he will wash away every trespass and every transgression. Let us prepare now to just meditate on his goodness, his sacrifice, and his love. We invite Brother Marcus to just lift up a meditation now where we give thought to our God how wonderful, how precious, how lovely, how gracious and kind, how forgiving. As we think about the one who did all that he said he would do, loved us so much that when we had fallen and couldn't get up, he continues to love us anyhow, to bless us anyhow, to stand with us anyhow. How magnificent and how marvelous is his love. How precious is that blood. How wonderful is his grace and magnificent is his mercy. We will bless the Lord. We will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, magnificent praise shall continue to be in our mouths. We will acknowledge that he has done this and not we ourselves. When we were lost, confounded, and confused, he went forth to seek and to search for that which was lost. Found us, embraced us, loved us, washed and cleansed us. And now we will, we will be his redeemed forevermore. This is the goodness of the Lord that we honor and we bless. God be with you. I pray that you'll accept his offer. His offer of salvation, redemption, and restoration. And that not only you'll be blessed by doing that, but you'll be blessed all the days of your life. And realize that our God is a great, glorious, and wonderful God. Lord be with you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, power and dominion, this day and always in the precious name of Jesus. We say amen. And amen again.